Hey everybody and welcome back. Today we're going to continue talking about the NPCs in Stardew Valley. Last time we covered Elliot, a much loved and sometimes reviled author living on the shores of the Gem Sea. This time we're going to take a look at possibly the only person in the valley that would even read one of Elliot's books. I think Penny's living situation somewhat drove her in this direction. I can think of at least a couple reasons she might want to escape into the world of fiction. And speaking of escape, there is, surprise, surprise, some alcoholism in this story, so if you're not in the headspace for that, maybe come back to this one later. Penny lives at Trailer. That's her address. That's the joke. I, I can keep doing this forever. You can go now if you want. I get it. I've covered Pam in a more thorough video, but suffice it to say that their home is not a comfortable place. Pam isn't the ideal parent, but it's also just a tough situation that they're in with Pam out of work at the beginning of the game. With or without a job, though, Pam will still stumble out of the saloon at midnight and pass out on the couch every night. And since Pam doesn't ever sleep in a bed, Penny has the only bedroom in the trailer. And despite the way the rest of the trailer is in a bit of disrepair, Penny has tailored the room to her interests with flowery wallpaper and shelves full of books. She also has an open book perpetually lying on the ground, meaning her room is always inherently dirtier than the rest of the trailer, other than during a single heart scene. What a hypocrite, right? Anyway, you can eventually replace Trailer with 2 River Road, but we won't be covering much of that today. Before we get too far, I just want to remind you that if you enjoy the videos I make, you can like them and leave a comment to really help the channel. If you want to know when new stuff is coming out, you can subscribe to be notified. And if you want to help me build a whole brand new house in just three days without waking up my wife or dogs or alerting any of the neighbors, you can check out my Patreon, linked in the video description. So I mentioned that Penny's life has been kind of tough. Let's talk about that. Much like Alex, Penny didn't have the best father in the world. At Low Hearts, in fall, Penny will tell you that that season is a sad time of year for her. If you've earned six hearts with Penny, you can see this dialogue in fall, where she tells you that her father felt trapped in the family. Remember that phrase for later, because it's going to be important. Pam herself never really talks about what happened with Penny's father, so it's kind of up to us to fill in the blanks. In my video about Pam, I suggested that maybe she crashed the bus. But even if that happened, was it before or after Penny's father left? It's tough to say. All we know for sure is that Penny has an alcoholic mother and her father isn't around. I'm not surprised that she wants to educate kids or that she spends her free time getting lost in books. In a book, the hero always does the right thing and people appreciate them for it. In reality, well, based on her heart scenes, Penny is well-intentioned, but she's also kind of a hot mess. At two hearts, you'll see George trying to get a letter from his mailbox. Also, Gus is over by the saloon for some reason. Now, you may not know this about George, but he's not the most mobile person in Pelican Town. Penny thinks she should jump in and help him reach his mail, and she pushes him out of the way to do so. When I made my video on George, I didn't really view this scene with the perspective it deserved, but it does make sense to me now that Penny is basically taking George's autonomy away from him under the guise of trying to help. A simple, can I get that letter for you, would be a much more respectful way of offering instead of inflicting her assistance. You can tell her that, but she will lose friendship points with you, which is kind of a theme, by the way. Penny gets hurt feelings more frequently and to a greater degree than any other marriage candidate. Either way though, George will apologize and Penny will say it must be tough getting old. Your choices here don't really matter, especially since you can literally never age in this game. At Four Hearts, Penny is trying to help someone again. This time you find her in the trailer complaining about the mess that Pam has made. She asks for your help in cleaning, and of course you comply. Penny tackles some of the dishes and you clean up the junk on the ground. Pam walks in while you're working and gets upset with Penny for moving all her stuff, saying she had everything where she wanted. This is my absolute favorite complaint about someone picking up your mess because it is both a very, very stupid argument and one that I have personally used. <laughs> I don't need you to put the remote away where it belongs because then I will never find it. But in reality, Pam is just embarrassed that Penny has a friend over cleaning up her house, which is fair, but also just clean up after yourself then. What's nice about this scene though is that Penny does stand up for herself. Obviously that doesn't really encourage any sort of actual change in Pam's behavior, but it's still interesting to see. At this point, Penny is being established as someone who cares, but kind of goes about it incorrectly. Like, she maybe doesn't really get interpersonal relationships. You might say she's book smart, not street smart. Her six heart scene shows us that she would also be better off following instructions in those books instead of blazing her own trail. At six hearts, Penny will try to cook for you, and I say try because I'm not sure that the food is edible. 
The farmer chokes it down, and you're encouraged to lie to her about how good it was. This does increase her friendship, and she then decides to name her Chili after you. You can also hurt her feelings here by telling her you'll take it to go, and surprisingly, telling her that it was not really good is the neutral response. Once again, Penny has attempted something and somehow soiled it. I told you, she's a hot mess. I'm also a little tired of the, like, feminine character who can't cook trope, but that might just be me. Maybe you haven't been exposed to it as many times as I have and you still think it's fun or funny. I don't know. Let me know down in the comments. So, I don't really know how to label Penny at this point, but she's basically someone, in her heart scenes at least, that can't really get it right. She's also quite shy and a bit awkward to talk to up to this point. She follows this loop of, like, caring about something, trying to help, messing it up, getting scolded, and then returning to her books until she tries caring about something again. Her dialogue also frequently includes apologies for really no reason, which makes me think she's used to walking on eggshells at home. It's the kind of situation you might want to help someone out of, which is, I think, a reason why some people marry Penny. And I think it's also the reason why Penny is so involved in the schooling of Vincent and Jazz. She wants to make sure that they have a bright future ahead of them, you know? Her eight heart scene gives you the chance to influence the kids of the town a little as well. You'll find Penny, Vincent, and Jazz in Cindersap Forest where you can give an impromptu guest lecture. Or you can turn Penny down and lose six hearts worth of friendship. Yikes. If you do decide to talk to the kids, you'll tell them about life in the valley and then talk to Penny about whether you'd want to have kids of your own. If you're feeling exceptionally cruel, you can tell her that you don't think you want to be tied down with a family. Almost like you might be, I don't know, trapped if you got married and had kids. I'm kind of surprised that this response only drops you down by 10 friendship points considering it's essentially what happened to her family. But man, that is a spicy selection. At 10 hearts, Penny plucks up her courage and asks you to meet her at the bathhouse after dark. This is an especially gutsy move for Penny, who has been growing slightly more confident throughout your relationship with her. If you're a monster who gave her a bouquet and raised her to 10 hearts just to break her heart, you can lose another 6 hearts, I just said heart like 4 times here, by telling her you don't actually have feelings for her. This is one of those scenes where it's like, yeah I guess the drama is kind of there, but why are we talking about this when I've shown you time and again that I'm interested in you? Like, I could just give you a mermaid pendant right now, you know, we're already at 10 hearts. Unless you're like getting everyone to 10 hearts, in which case, I guess, yeah, you are the monster. Penny's heart scenes are a mixture of endearing and kind of embarrassing and awkward. I think a lot of people want to save her from the situation. Just like Shane, I, I do think that there's a little bit of a savior complex at play here, at least for some players. But after marriage, Penny suffers the same kind of like fading into the background that most spouses do. She's very kind as a spouse, and her dialogue is cute, it's supportive, it's uplifting. I also kind of like the special decor that you get from her at her 14 heart scene, but to me, I think it feels like Penny was the protagonist of her story, stumbling and bumbling and doing her best, one step forward, two steps back, but then the farmer arrives like a hero from a fairy tale and whisks her away to their castle and that's where Penny's story ends, which is a bummer. I'd like to see more about Penny discovering herself away from Pam, but that's just kind of how marriage goes in Stardew Valley sometimes. What do you think about Penny? Is she a cottagecore cutie who must be protected? Or are you sick and tired of playing the hero for her? Let me know down in the comments, and I will see you in the next video.